some time to do that, and I'll introduce him while he looks silly. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is Bastian Ilso, he's the guy uh, who has been producing our release videos since three... Twelve? And the Builder video. Uh, I got it all wrong, he did a lot more stuff than I thought. <laughs> We have a lot of time. My presentation is uh, is a bit on the short end, so uh, I'll just take my time, and uh, there'll be a good room for questions and everything. How do you turn this off? Hold the button. Uh -huh. Give it to us. No. Yeah. I think I did it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, my name is uh, Bastian, as uh, Fabiana introduced me. And uh, I do release videos. Uh, is anyone else familiar with the uh, videos? Yeah. yeah? Uh, because then we might want to watch one. Um, so um, let's just start by that, since that's not part of this VLT thing. Spring has come to the Northern Hemisphere, and so has a new release of GNOME. This release, we are bringing you new streamlined theming and a better development experience. Several applications have been revamped. For example, GNOME's Image Viewer, which now features new user interface controls. This is a version without music. Let's see if I can find the right one. <laughs> <laughs> it might be this one. Spring has come to the Northern Hemisphere, and so has a new release of GNOME. This release, we are bringing you new streamlined theming and a better development experience. Several applications have been revamped. For example, GNOME's Image Viewer, which now features new user interface controls. Files has also received some love, with simplified pop-over menus an improved file view. GNOME 316 also brings new visuals to GNOME Shell. This includes the Activities Overview, the Application Menu, and the System Menu. GNOME Shell also provides an improved design of the notification system. These improvements aim to make notifications in GNOME more discoverable, but also easy to get out of your way. This cycle features three new GNOME apps. One of them is a preview of GNOME Calendar, an app which helps you plan ahead. GNOME Calendar integrates with your online accounts so you can take your calendar with you on the go. This release also features a preview of GNOME Books, a new application for your book reading needs. Furthermore, 
This release brings a preview of Builder, a new application for developers. Builder is an IDE, aiming to improve the developer experience on GNOME. Thanks to more than 500 donors, the project was successfully crowdfunded. If you want to help improve the developer experience too, visit the crowdfunding campaign in the description below. GTK also aims to improve the development experience this cycle, with many improvements to the GTK Inspector support for OpenGL and a near backend. Finally, GNOME 316 ships an improved GLIF, aiming to make life much easier for C developers. The new GNOME release is available for you as a live image to try now. GNOME 316 will be shipped by many distributions in the near future. GNOME has made five people, four people. Help us make GNOME better by getting involved today. release video that was released back in March and um, besides doing these release videos I uh, do some study I, I study something called mediality which is uh, a, a study where we hack some prototypes together for creatives and create some uh, create some things based on some user studies and then we make uh, these weird Harry Potter movies also and <laughs> study tronics. Um, but um, in this talk I'm going to talk a little about uh, the purpose of these videos what is the utility of these videos for GNOME also what is, uh, why do I use, do them myself and why, uh, what is actually uh, the process of doing these um, and um, so far, uh, we've had the uh, free release videos, uh, starting out with the 3.12, which is uh, getting old. It's uh, almost uh, one and a half year ago. Uh, and now we have the 3.16 video and very likely a 3.18 video as well, uh, when that's happening in, in September here, in a month. Um, and um, these uh, videos have proven to be a very useful tool for engagement. Uh, these are some statistics that uh, Sri sent me from back in uh, in September after 3.14 was uh, released, uh, and uh, it seems that the uh, the release videos is uh, getting shared and getting hit by the mouths of users uh, a lot more on social media, uh, which is uh, pretty much dominating the the internet in today's world. Uh, so that makes uh, that's something that makes the, the release videos uh, a very useful uh, tool, um, and uh, we are getting uh, new users from uh, uh, within the uh, Linux community and and outside. Uh, um, and I think um, the the fact that uh, the release videos create some visuals uh, that that um, uh, and and creates this sort of clickbait uh, on, on social media. Uh, means that uh, maybe a user from KDE or a user from Unity suddenly would like to you know, try a GNOME because they can see, oh, these are the latest changes or something like that. Um, hmm. Another thing uh, that this is uh, useful for is uh, for the GNOME boost. This is uh, back at FOSDEM 2013. Uh, where I think we had the uh, 3.12 video shown for the first time on this little screen here, uh, was it this one? But uh, regardless, it, it means that we can also attract uh, users not only for uh, online, but actually also when you see them face to face at a conference, uh, uh, they might go over and you know buy some more merchandise or just start talk about you know what's going on in the, in the new release uh, <laughs> because you have this eye catching factor as well. The lovely voice of Karen Handler. This is her sound. 
But uh, the next thing I wanted to show is uh, that uh, these uh, release videos has also been featured in uh, various talks. This is uh, Tobias Müller at OpenSUSE conference 2014, where he did a talk on GNOME, and uh, he utilized these uh, release videos in, in his talk uh, and showed it uh, live at the presentation. Um, furthermore, they've also been used uh, by a cat at uh, Quali 2014, so this is another uh, utility of uh, these uh, release videos that I think uh, is uh, is helping uh, the community out. Um, and then when uh, the, when the release comes out, uh, it, it also has this impact on uh, social media that uh, you have uh, you you have for example uh, George S, which is sitting here, uh, committing a whole bunch of uh, things to to GNOME Calendar and, and a lot of uh, blog posts about it. And then it's uh, really awesome that we can finally also showcase this work to, to users uh, and uh, show the, the new interaction and the new app. And the community can actually come uh, return with some feedback, uh, for example, from, uh, from Google Plus or from uh, the social media that we are distributing it to. Uh, This is free. Okay. Um, we also have uh, distributions uh, resharing uh, these videos, uh, which means that uh, we we are uh, we are we are reaching out far as well with them. Uh, for example, the uh, OpenSUSE and, and Fedora project for this was back in 3.16, uh, generating some some extra activity on, on social media, uh, and can now show what's coming up in, in the next version uh, audio visually, basically. Um, and um, that's uh, that, that pretty much sums up, you know, uh, the whole uh, idea of uh, having these videos and, and why we might want to have them in, in GNOME and why I think we should uh, continue to have something like that. Um, the reason to that uh, I also do them is um, that it's a really big uh, learning opportunity. Uh, these uh, videos take around uh, a month. Uh, to make, uh, or at least they used to, uh, and um, it involves a lot of different things from compositing to video editing to to voiceover, uh, which I fortunately can uh, can uh, leverage over to Karen, who is uh, making this uh, great uh, voiceover that makes the videos seem so much more professional. Um, and um, the first step in in making these videos is. Uh, to, to create this manuscript, and usually um, this manuscript is uh, based on a synopsis, which is then created from um, some some requirements and, and based on you know what message you actually want to, to convey. Uh, this manuscript is uh, is initially written by me, but then the engagement team and the rest of the community can chime in, uh, so we can uh, keep the the manuscript uh, great and uh, updated for the. For the 3.16 release, uh, that's that's what we are seeing here. Um, after the this step, where we have this back and forth uh, between uh, me and the engagement team, we uh, I, I go over and begin to play a bit with the uh, colors, which is another step. Uh, usually, there's um, you need to sort of figure out what what colors would work well to convey this message of no being elegant. Again, and so forth. And I'm, I'm just showing some draft stuff here from back when I was doing the 3.16 video. Uh, and um, this was the final I decided to go for. And it makes a lot of sense since the content that we're actually showing is using the advanced theme. So having the animations, uh, both the abstract ones and then the actual video, uh, using this theme uh, as well would, would mean that it's pretty much better. Um, then I do some shooting, and uh, I do this from a Chromebook that I gratefully borrowed from uh, GNOME, and uh, it's running uh, Rawhide, um, so that means I can get the latest uh, apps uh, and uh, everything, um, and uh, this is how the, the videos usually look like. Uh, I have this weird FFmpeg script I found on the internet that I use, uh, and then I make the 
wallpaper really insane degree so mm -hmm. I can uh, uh, composite the wallpaper out uh, in uh, Blender's compositor, uh, which means we can then throw it inside the uh, 3D space and uh, do mm -hmm. funky animations with it. Um, there's around 40 animations for each release video uh, that would uh, sort of amount to, to a three minutes video, so that's a lot of work. Um, but uh, I try to keep it somewhat simple, uh, which also helps conveying this uh, idea about, you know, the design philosophy about being minimalistic and simple and elegant in film. So that actually fits quite decently. Um, just to give an idea about how little difference there is in the camera movement here. It kind of lets the content shine rather than, than letting the animation shine, which is something I only caught up in the later uh, release videos. Uh, so that's uh, the, the end result. Uh, you have these very subtle movements of, of the camera and then it's actually the video itself which is uh, you know, being in focus here. Um, there's of course also the more complex animations. This is uh, the ending animation of the release video uh, where you have all sorts of crazy things going on. Um, I usually try to reuse this, recycle it a bit. This is uh, something I use both in the GNOME 3.14 video and also in the Greek GNOME 3.16 video. Uh, and that means that it just needs to be gradually updated. Um, uh, and that means less work and, and more time to, to do more polish when you get to the video editing uh, space. Um, it uh, looks a bit confusing, maybe. But it's actually uh, it's, it's, uh, quite nice. Um, it's not really. It's built up over time, you know, from the start of the first month, where I get some idea about some animation or it's oh we need to shoot this to to the end. It kind of gradually fills up. Uh, usually it starts out with the voiceover being laid out, uh, where we try to time it, find out how how should the flow be in the video, and uh, this is the one that's done by Karen Sandler, uh, and it's made possible uh, because uh, Karen Sandler's husband also happens to be an audio engineer. So he has crazy equipment, and uh, Karen has an excellent voice for voice <coughs> that makes uh, YouTube users say, oh, it sounds like a Mac advertisement, you know, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> um, so, um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the excellent work by Karen Sandler, uh, that we then combine with random sketches and labels and, and so forth, um, and once, uh, you have a good idea about the flow of the video and how things should be. Uh, I slowly begin to shoot each of the, the apps and then uh, you know they get in. I render the animations out and uh, as these PNG sequences to not lose uh, quality and then uh, lay them on top uh, and, and create this stream of, uh, of video that in the end makes up the whole release video. Uh, then you add music afterwards, you could also do before I guess, but. Uh, that, that's been the uh, sort of the, the progress of the timeline uh, when I've been doing it. And finally, we uh, now have uh, subtitles uh, thanks to uh, Peter, who has been uh, doing, uh, helping me out uh, doing the video subtitles uh, repository, which means that, for example, the 3.16 video could be distributed in 17 different languages. Uh, so uh, that also means we can go to, for example, national conferences that are you know, maybe spoken in, in some foreign uh, language uh, or non-English language. Um, and then we can show uh, these videos anyway. I know uh, that uh, Bastian went to, uh, I think, a French conference that yes. where actually uh, yeah, Alexander had helped with uh, making French subtitles and, and that meant we then could show uh, these videos in, in French. Um, this is the repository, so if any of you happens to also be translators, then uh, feel free to check out the video subtitles repository. So we'll have even more languages for 3.18. Um, and um, all of this is done with uh, free software, of course. Uh, Inkscape, GIMP, and Blender combined is, I think it's a really great pipeline, uh, and. Uh, you really have a lot of power with these tools. Um, so uh, that's, um, to sum up, I think uh, 
uh, this is uh, is something that uh, benefits Chrome uh, quite a, a lot, and it has a lot of utility for, for engagement, uh, which is something we <coughs> definitely need to do more. And uh, I think uh, it's something actually generally in free software, uh, something we should uh, should do more of, uh, having audio visual uh, material, uh, because this seems to be. Uh, more interesting to use, uh, for example, on social media, and, and seems to attract people. Uh, and uh, that's basically it. So, if you have any questions, uh, then you may ask them, or, I, or just contact me. Please. And if not, I have a question for you. <laughs> so. I have a comment. Uh, right, right, I can uh, only. Reassure that uh, the resistors have really made a difference uh, when the engagement team uh, around the work, the engagement team stuff, and the resistors have really helped uh, there. So it's great. Thank you. Uh, I have a uh, question. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you. It's an awesome work. I, and I was quite pleasure to see Calendar on the video, particularly. And well, my question for you is kind of personal because it has nothing to do with the video itself. Uh, how did you start contributing to GNOME? How did you find it out? And why did you did you choose GNOME instead of I don't know KDE? <laughs> um. I uh, mean, the, the part about the why I use GNOME, I guess it's uh, it, it's the one that looks nice. <laughs> 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 and you don't have to do anything to have a, a, a computer that works. So that's that's why I use GNOME. But uh, as for the uh, how I got involved with GNOME, um, my initial motivation was to give back to the community because I felt that GNOME was a really polished, nice product. This was back in GNOME 3.6, and it's even better now, but uh, even then, I, I felt that, and uh, that kind of got me started. But I'm actually doing a talk on that at FOSS GPG as well. Um, but I started out in the engagement team uh, and uh, wrote some annual report stuff, and then Sri got me into making some more videos because I had made this uh, how to get a good workflow in GNOME 3.6 video on YouTube. And that that got a lot of views all of a sudden, so that's, that, that's kind of where it started. Um, yeah, I hope that answered your question. Um, about the apps, it's always hard to sort of figure out which, you know, you have maybe three minutes of exposure time, you don't want to make the release videos too long, there is, you know, the, at the AGM yesterday, there was like so many commits every time there's a new GNOME release, and what do we actually feature and stuff like that. I try to cycle a bit between the the apps. Uh, last uh, in 3.16, I, I didn't feature uh, maps, for example, so I'm probably gonna feature that this time. Mm -hmm. And then there's all, all the work by the GSOC students and the interns, which of course also will be featured. So uh. uh, I have one question. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's fine. Uh, so like inspiration for the videos when you're like composing it. Do you have any? Where do you get your inspiration from? Like any other? Um, no design on IRC. <laughs> I, I, I mean, uh, this. Uh, I think the all the gnomes assets in the gnome design team. Uh, repository is a great source of inspiration if you want to know uh, how GNOME from a design perspective should it looks and you know how uh, uh, yeah like the style of the the, the composition is uh, mm, I don't know each uh, video is sort of it has some sort of theme I think in 3.14, we focused, I, I had some extra focus on developer experience. It kind of, uh, the composition itself kind of uh, depends on how the, um, uh, you know, what what has been kind of the focus in, in this release. 
uh, sometimes there's not a focus, but sometimes there's like you see more work in, in GDK and then suddenly there's builder and you know, so okay. then uh, you want to have more focus on my first well, sorry, but uh, more like thinking do you like what philosophy is it yourself to get some work on uh, like for instance mm -hmm. some other projects or something? Maybe, yeah. The question was if I watch a lot of videos myself to get inspiration. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, maybe it's uh, something subconsciously. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, so, one thing I forgot to mention: uh, I was not showing how you make these videos in this talk. And if people are interested in knowing how these videos are made, I made a USB dongle. It's in my back, and uh, there is. Yeah, I can actually show. Uh, on this uh, very high DPI screen. Uh, the but that, uh, wait, I need to find the USB. But uh, yeah, I have uh, I have assets. I did a workshop at FSCons last year uh, and made a lot of assets. I think there was only uh, five or seven people there, but uh, so I thought I could recycle them a bit. But this one has like. Uh, Stuff like uh, resources. If you need, to, if you want to get into video editing for Blender, there's I made this basic tutorial on the on the basic tools and all the funky navigation with the middle click, and you love it. Um, then uh, some more tutorials, uh, animation in, in Blender with cycles, uh, importing images and SVGs. If if you're up for that, and yeah, so I I, I did a small collection. Uh, for, for the tools that I use, and um, I even have uh, the script, the really horrible script, oh, I don't know if it's horrible, but this internet thing that I found uh, that I use for recording, which uses X11 and some, some other things, um, and then some example release videos and a demo clip, so feel free to, 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 get, that, uh, to get that up here. You desire so. Um. I have a question. You have to wait. <laughs> um, two questions actually. One, how long does those videos take? And two, uh, how how ex I mean, I saw more or less the outline of how you work, but uh, do you work? Do you have like do you commit those changes like to to one of our repositories or are those? things uh, available somewhere that someone could just, uh, if they want to, to do it with easy themselves or, or some other kind of video they can work on top of those files or something like that? Um, at the moment it's pretty unorganized. Uh, I work on the video in this uh, SSD drive. So the, everything is on, uh, like we have a bus factor, factor of one here, unfortunately. I have the 4.2 gigabytes for the 3.14 video. So if there's a place that I can put up uh, uh, large uh, files, uh, then uh, that might work. But it's uh, probably because uh, I could probably put up the, the work uh, and then, you know, uh, not with the actual animations, but then you would have to render them out yourself uh, with the uh, with the animations in this uh, PNG, uh, well, that's not PNG, this one is in here, yeah. Is this frames? Um, so <laughs> you would probably have to to render this out uh, yourself, but I think it's definitely doable. I don't know. Maybe it will fit inside the uh, GNOME design team repository with a uh, conduct GNOME packaging or something. Like that. Probably. You, you would probably want to create a new repository, otherwise it would get too big, and uh, Git is very bad with big files. Yes, that's that's true. Yeah. Another thing is that the the videos themselves. Which I don't have for this one. Even if Git is fine with big files, it's just for people to get started and they clone that repository yeah. and yeah. You spend like a day catching up on the other side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the actual videos that I took themselves are pretty well compressed, so they might be okay. I'm not sure how Git handles that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Uh, when uh, me and uh, Jakob had a, had a repository when uh, we were working on the, the, the builder video, and, and that also, that was a, that's another way the, that, that I guess the release videos could be set up as well. Um, so, um, 
But uh, I, I'll, I'll, we, we can uh, talk about that later, maybe. Um, I don't think I can do this. Either. <laughs> Patrick. Yeah, we need Patrick. That's true. So, but yes, for now it's uh, it's here. And I'm, I'm already started on the synopsis, so if any of you are very knowledgeable about what's going to happen for 3.18, then uh, feel free to uh, to talk to me so I can add it to my little list of things and uh, discoveries. So, yeah. Do you enjoy working on these release videos? What do you find? Do you think the community feedback is good enough for you? And anything else? Yeah, I, I mean, you're a brave guy. I tried using Blender some time ago, and my eyes burned. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Do, do you find it uh, enjoyable working with the community? Um. Admittedly, there is some of the work which is uh, a pain, and uh, that's because there are some things. Uh, that actually, the main problem is performance. Not that I uh, don't like to, to work with it, but uh, when you have uh, release videos, then you also quite often have a lot of uh, stuff. Um, this is now I'm just doing something live because that's that's fun, but. Um, as you can, for example, see the, the there is some <laughs> performance issues with, with Blender. It, it has a lot of tools, but uh, it, it, there are some things that sometimes uh, makes it uh, a, a little pain. But um, I think 90% of the time I really uh, enjoy it, especially because uh, when you once you get the release video out there, then you know you get all these comments from users saying, "Oh, this is uh, you know GNOME is awesome. Ah, this looks so great." And you know, then then it really pays back, uh, and it does that in like three days. So, uh, and and for each release video I make, it also gets a lot easier because I become better at making them, and uh, I create more material that we could potentially recycle. Uh, so, uh, I think three point twelve, I was quite <laughs> in a stress there, but then for the other videos, it, it was much more of a Pain-free process. Cool. <laughs> I'll just uh, showcase some uh, fancy uh, animation. It's this one. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's really amazing when you get used to it, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> like you can do something like this and get an overview. Uh, It's you have to hold control and then middle click and then you have to move your mouse diagonally. So it, <laughs> then, then it basically you have to be a wizard. <laughs> you can also do it in the menus. <laughs> and you're making my eyes burn. Why go by clapping? Hey, I have a question, Bastian. Did now you went to uh, the Libra Graphics meeting? So did you? Uh, I'm assuming that you showcase your work using Inkscape and whatnot. What kind of feedback did you get from the Inkscape team on like how to make, how to improve Inkscape to better suit the kind of work you're doing? Um, <clears throat> I, I'm not. I th maybe I showcased my work in a lightning talk, but I didn't have a. I, I booked the plane ticket a week before it happened uh, for that conference, uh, so um, I I was not uh, prepared to, to 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 showcase my work per se, uh, but I did have a talk with the Inkscape developers actually. Uh, they were talking a bit about you know they're doing this feature based cycle, and they were talking about how the community was a bit uh, you know getting. Uh, what you call it, uh, extorted, uh, because it's been such a long time since the uh, the last Inkscape uh, release and so forth. But it seems like Inkscape is is getting uh, is is getting better and better, and now it sounds like they also stopped following the SVG specification cycle, sort of. So they are actually 
uh, will, will plan to do more release more often now. So I think that's that's quite healthy. Um, and I hope that, uh, I mean, Gimp and Inkscape, both, they are still on GDK2, and I, I hope that, that we will be able to, to make the move to GDK3 soon. And as for Blender, I think that's a lost cause, but, you know, that's uh, how it is. So that, that one is moving very forward, very fast, but, uh, yeah, the, it, I think it will remain one of those tools where you have to know uh, the whole keyboard before you can really use it. So. But I try to make those tutorials to make the uh, make it easier uh, for to to access the, and and start using it. But uh, yeah, that, that's that's how it is. <laughs> um, if I'm not mistaken, you use your laptop to do the video editing. I do some video editing with Blender too, and I have a desktop for that, and I have two monitors, and sometimes I feel that's not enough, and I would like a third <laughs> one, so I would like to have some uh, feedback on how you manage to do this with just the laptop screen. Uh, for some reason, the, well, I, for, first of all, I have this 17-inch screen, which, I mean, it's nothing compared to two or three monitors, but uh, I don't know, it works for me. Once you get used to the padding and the, the weird zoom, then then it's kind of easy to, to get a grasp and an overview. But um, I think maybe uh, the, my, my biggest issue is that the, the, the performance, uh, the reason too that I use PNG sequences is because Blender is faster at, at the, reading PNG sequences than it is at decoding uh, NKV files live uh, and similar. Uh, and the same goes for its OpenGL uh, playback. Uh, there are some things that that it doesn't really uh, support, like uh, alpha over, uh, so you don't get this live preview the same way. Uh, let me see. In this case, I have, um, for example, uh, both this uh, app here but also a background that actually moves over time. Uh, so it's very useful to, to get feedback all the down the all the way down the, the strip stack, what you might call it. So um, uh, and one thing uh, that's been improved is that you can uh, make proxies. <laughs> Let's see uh, if I can here. Uh, so you can actually make it uh, render out some some uh, something in, in a bit lower quality that's easier to work with. Uh, I did that for the, the montage video, which I might be shown later. Um, and, and that basically, uh, that can basically help you out if, if, if performance is an issue. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, is there any other question? If not, then... Uh, True. Uh, my question for you was, uh, I wanted some opinions on whether you think uh, the release videos should continue every half a year, or whether uh, I should change the focus over to creating videos specifically for promoting GNOME, for example, to non gaming users. The release videos are very centered around showcasing all the new features, and some of the new features might require that you have some insight in what is already there. Um, so. That was, that's basically uh, what I was wondering, uh, because these videos uh, happen every half a year. So, the question is: Is is the, my time better spent off using uh, like creating videos for specific purposes, like make a video specifically for Globus, make a video specifically that we can use for outreach in in uh, communities that are not that familiar with Linux even? Yeah, I think it's and a hard. useful for university outreach when you oh, yeah. like uh, code workshops at the universities. Um, open, open Hatch specifically does a lot of that. 
you could like have one video for, for that use case and continue on having a use video like good value. So it won't be too much for extra work. I mean, just one extra video, not, yeah, what, not one, one every... Yeah. <laughs> 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 could you like, even have a video on a topic and then have it updated and like refresh and just, you know, that way you don't have to do a whole new video. I can't promise I can spill this. Something like that, uh, I guess. Um, yeah, I think that might be good. Yeah, like viewers for applications that are related to your project and applications. And if you can showcase features, I'll write that. I'm sure that's a good, that's a good walk because they're, 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 unless they're, um, they're not moving, I mean, unless they're mature, otherwise if they're constantly changing, you're going to have a hard time. You know. oh, uh, we are over time. Uh, I guess we can also talk about this in the engagement box, so you're all welcome to join. Yeah, yes. definitely. When is that? Uh, Tomorrow. It's on the 11th, not here, uh, on the other side of the river. Uh, and then we can continue working about it. Thank you so much, Boston.